Welcome to A Slice of Therapy. This podcast was created with Anchor. And if you've not heard of Anchor, let me explain. It's free. It's a really easy way to make a podcast. And it helps me because I can just do this every day directly into my phone. Because there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. So if you fancy making a podcast too, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's funny that despite being a therapist myself, I can often feel really quite critical sometimes of therapy or certainly particular ways of doing therapy. And the reason I'm critical, I suppose, is because I think at times what therapy will tend to do is kind of shine a light in places that I would consider to be unhelpful. So I'll tell you what I mean by this. For me, a big part of therapy is validation. A big part of therapy, as I see it, if the aim is that you want to walk out of the room feeling confident and empowered and feeling as though overcoming your challenges is more than doable and you're just the person to be able to do it. I think it's really important to focus on your resources, your strengths, the best of you, the things that you know how to do, the change that you're already making in life and how you do that, the strategies that are proven to work for you and all the all the change that takes place like during the therapy process where we'll meet for a second or third time and changes have actually happened and my focus is always on that and I just think that's a much better way of approaching change. Now the reason why I say that is because the way I see it anybody who comes to talk to me in terms of my professional role, what will happen is that they'll have been struggling with something for a while, probably. And they'll be very connected about, they'll be very connected to the problem. They'll be very connected to their own sense of what's wrong with them. Their focus will often be very much on that. Oh, what's wrong with me that this this problem isn't being overcome, that I'm kind of still in this and still in this struggle? What's wrong with me? And of course, what happens is that a lot of attitudes in terms of what's called therapy is actually focused on what's wrong with you. You know, when you look at kind of certain books that have disorders in, the focus does tend to be on what's wrong with you. Now, the way I see it is, if you've been struggling with something for quite a while, and that's normally the case, and your focus has been on what's wrong with you, and your focus has been on the problem that you're struggling with, and you feel as though you're not getting anywhere, then when you come to me, why would I start looking in exactly the same place as you've been looking? Surely what you need from me is to turn the torch into another direction. To focus our attention on the place that you've not been looking. You know, imagine if you've been, I don't know, looking on the mantelpiece for your keys. And you can't find your keys anywhere and you're looking on the left of the mantelpiece, you're looking in the middle of the mantelpiece, you're looking on the right of the mantelpiece and you can't find the keys anywhere. If you were to bring me in then to help find the keys, the worst place for me to start looking would be on the mantelpiece because you've already looked there. So my job, I'd be better employed to say, well, do you realise that there's a whole room here that we could look in? And start putting our attention there. And so 
if you've not made a lot of progress and still feel in the struggle and you notice that you've been focused on, oh, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get past this? And you've been focused on the problem. Then seeing as that hasn't moved you out of the struggle, when you come to me, I need to help you look in a different place. And those different places are to look for the solution. To look for what life would be like once this problem was out of the way so that you can recognize it when it comes along. But most importantly, to focus on what's right with you. Because when we're in a struggle, that's the thing that we disconnect from. That's the thing that we miss. That's the thing that we forget about ourselves. Because we get so overwhelmed with the struggle. And the struggle makes us feel as though we're being unsuccessful. And so we can really lose connection with what's right with us. And every single person that I see has a whole heap of stuff that's right with them. And so that's where I look. Because if you're starting with a person's strengths, if you're starting with what they're doing well, then they're going to be much more likely, aren't they, to feel confident and empowered and in touch with strategies that already work as well. You see, there's a funny thing about change. And it's hard to notice until our attention is drawn to it. But the thing we want is likely showing up, at least to some extent, in our lives. It might not be there much, but those green shoots, maybe even more than that, are likely there already. And if they're not likely there already, they've likely shown up at some point in the past. And so with the right questions, we can often dig in by looking at what's right with you to focus on how you've actually generated some sense of the change that you want in your life already, either right now or at some time in the past. And once we find that, we realise that actually we do have the capacity to make the very change that we want. And once we've found those strategies, we can just basically focus on doing more of them. You see, there's always two ways that you can look at a particular story. So I'll give you an example from a, a group that I was in. So I was in a, uh, I was listening to a group of therapists talk about their clients and it epitomizes really the kind of difference that I think my way of therapy represents and, and this story I think will will give you an idea about what I mean in terms of why I think this is so valuable as an approach because I was listening to, the, to these therapists talk about their clients and, and one of them said and obviously I'll keep this confidential in terms of the, um, the details, but they basically said something along the lines of that their clients had said, oh, I, I've been in a, I've had a tough week. Um, I went into a real funk of depression for about three days and I'm feeling better now, but for those three days, I barely left my bed. So that's the story, isn't it? You know, the person went into a funk for three days, they feel better now, but for three days, they, they barely left their bed. And there's actually two ways you can look at that story. But what's a very common thing in therapy is what this particular therapist did. And they started asking their client questions like, oh, dear. So what on earth do you think triggered that again? What was it that you did to get into that depression again? Now, I grant you that's one way of looking at it, but it's hardly an empowering way. It's hardly something that focuses on a person's strengths. And I was kind of taken aback by this because it's not the question I would have asked at all. When I hear that story of someone who's been in a funk for three days and they're feeling better now, but they were in bed basically for three days, barely moving. My question isn't the one about the supposed failure, which is often focused on, but 
my focus instead would be, oh, wow. So how on earth did you get yourself out of that funk? How on earth have you got yourself to the place where you're feeling so much better now, despite having been so low just a few days ago? What is it that you did to get yourself out of that? Because after all, they wouldn't have done it with me because it would have been between sessions. So if that's what they report at their next session, then my focus is very much on, wow, how on earth did you get out of that funk? considering that you were feeling so low and yet still somehow you've managed to get out of that to the point where you're feeling better now. So you see what I mean? There's two ways of looking at it. There's one way which focuses on what's wrong with you and there's another way which focuses on what's right with you. Now, which of those approaches do you think is most likely to result in you feeling confident and empowered and capable and ready to do change, ready to make things happen for yourself. Now, I would say that it's the second way. And that doesn't mean that you can't look at the problem. That doesn't mean that you can't make change because huge change happens. And that's not to say that you can't dig into stuff if that's really interesting to you as well, to get an understanding of what's going on. But all the time, the important thing is to constantly keep an eye out for those green shoots of recovery. Because if we're both there looking for what's wrong, how will we ever spot the green shoots of recovery? So my approach is always to be looking out for those signs of things getting better, even if it's only to an extent. And really amplifying those. Because in those green shoots, where we've made those happen, that's the starting point. That's the starting point of the change that we want. And so what I always focus on is the person's strength. What I always focus on is being really eagle-eyed for those good things that are happening. Because when we're feeling down, we often miss those good things that are happening. And we don't realise that we've had a huge role to play in that. And I think that's a core element of good therapy. To focus very strongly on what's right with you. And it's counterintuitive, isn't it? Because you wouldn't really expect that to be the focus. Because... So much of what we see in the therapy literature is about, you know, how irrational we are or how, you know, what, what our pathology is and all these kind of things. And I've always felt that that was kind of missing the point. That the real point is that everyone who's in front of me, everyone who's having this struggle is always somebody pretty remarkable. Is always somebody who has a life experience full of things that they have done that are unique to them, are unique to their story and actually provides the key for making the change that we're trying to achieve together. And so, like I said at the start, if you're looking for the keys on the mantelpiece and you can't find them and so you bring me in to help you look for the keys, it makes no sense for me to start looking on the mantelpiece as well. If you've already given that a good old thorough look, what you really want is for me to do something different. And there's something different that I do that I think makes the way I do therapy different to so many others is that I'm really, really focused on your strengths, your abilities, the strategies that already have been proven to work for you, you know, rather than giving you advice that doesn't necessarily fit. And also just kind of really having a very strong focus on every tiny bit of change that's happening in the positive direction 
so that we both see that, so that we both understand that change is happening, so that we don't miss that, so we create a momentum towards change. And we also create a confidence as well. Because like with any change, once you notice that it's happening, you know, even if you like, you know, go in the gym or whatever and you spot a little bit of a muscle peeping through, it's really, it's really important to spot it, isn't it? Because we feel good and it's like, ah, I can see him getting results here and it's motivating and it creates momentum forward. And so my focus is always to amplify that. My focus is always to look for that, to identify what's right with you and to keep noticing what's going right with you as you go through that journey of change. And so if you find this useful as an idea, you might actually want to work with me directly yourself, one-to-one. I'm Alan Parry, and you can find out more about me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. If you like the way of working that I'm advocating in this episode. And of course, you can subscribe to these podcasts completely free of charge. There's a new one every day, so feel free to uh, subscribe so you never miss an episode. And of course, if you find it useful, please do share it and so other people can get the benefits as well. So thanks for listening. I'll be back again tomorrow with another one.